Hi, welcome back. Today's book is Stone Soup, retold by Marsha Brown. This book has a very good lesson for us, so I want you to be listening, and when the book is over, we'll talk about it. Stone Soup. Three soldiers trudged down a road in a strange country. They were on their way home from the war. They were tired, and they were very hungry. In fact, they hadn't eaten for two days. How I would like a good dinner tonight, said the first, and a bed to sleep in, said the second. But all that's impossible, said the third. We must trudge on. On they marched. Suddenly ahead of them, they saw the lights of a village. Maybe we'll find a bite to eat there, said the first, and a loft to sleep in, said the second. No harm in asking, said the third. Now the peasants of that place feared strangers. When they heard that three strange soldiers were coming, they talked amongst themselves. Here come three soldiers. Soldiers are always hungry, but we have little enough for ourselves. And they hurried to hide all of their food. They pushed sacks of barley under the hay in the lofts. They lowered buckets of milk down their wells. They spread old quilts over their carrot bins. They hid their cabbages and potatoes under the beds. They hung their meat in cellars. They hid all that they had to eat. Then they waited. The soldiers stopped at the first house of Paul and Francois. Good evening to you, they said. Could you spare a bit of food for three hungry soldiers? We've had no food for ourselves for three days, said Paul and Francois. They made sad faces. It has been a poor harvest. The three soldiers went on to the house of Albert and Louise. Could you spare a bit of food and have you some little corner where we could sleep, they asked. Oh no, said Albert. We gave all we could spare to the soldiers who came before you. Our beds are all full, said Louise. At Vincent and Marie's, the answer was the same. It had been a poor harvest, and all the grain must be kept for seed. And so it went through the whole village. Not a peasant had any food to give away. They all had good reasons. One family had used the grain for feed. Another had an old father to care for. They all had too many mouths to feed. The villagers stood in the street and sighed. They all looked as hungry and sad as they could. The three soldiers talked together. They're making a plan. Then the first soldier called out, Good people! The peasants grew near. We are very hungry soldiers in a strange land. We've asked you for food, but you have none. We will then have to make stone soup. The peasants stared. Stone soup? That would be something to know about. First, we'll need a large iron pot, the soldiers said. The peasants brought the largest pot they could find. How else to cook enough? Well, that's none too large, said the soldier, but it'll have to do. And now to fill it and a fire to heat it. It took many buckets of water to fill the pot. A fire was built on the village square and the pot was set to boil. And now, if you please, three round smooth stones. Those are easy enough to find. The peasants' eyes grew round as they watched the soldiers drop the stones into the pot. Any soup needs salt and pepper, said the soldiers as they began to stir. Children ran to fetch salt and pepper. Stones like these generally make good soup, but oh, oh, if there were carrots, it would be much better. Why, I think I have a carrot or two, said Francois, and off she ran. She came back with her apron full of carrots from the bin beneath the red quilt where she had hid them.
A good stone soup should have some cabbage. If only we had cabbage, said the soldiers as they sliced the carrots into the pot. But no use asking, for there are no cabbages here. I think I could find a cabbage somewhere, said Marie, and she hurried home. Back she came with three cabbages from the cupboard under her bed. If only we had a bit of beef and a few potatoes, this soup would be good enough for a rich man's table, said the soldiers. The peasants thought about it. Hmm. They remembered their potatoes and their sides of beef hanging in the cellars. They ran to fetch them. A rich man's soup and all from a few stones. It seems like magic. Ah, oh, sighed the soldiers as they stirred the beef and the potatoes. If we only had a little barley and a cup of milk, this soup would be fit for a king himself. Indeed, he had asked for just such a soup when last we dined with him. The peasants looked at each other. The soldiers had entertained a king? Well, but no use asking, for you've already told us you have none, said the soldiers. One of the peasants ran to get the milk and the barley. The soldiers stirred, stirred them in. At last the soup was ready. All of you shall taste, the soldier said, but first a table must be set. Great tables were placed in the square, and all around were lighted torches. Such a soup! How could it smell? Truly fit for a king. But then the peasants asked themselves, would not such a soup require bread and a roast and cider? Soon a banquet was spread and everyone sat down to eat. Never had there been such a feast. Never had the peasants tasted such soup and fancy made from stones. They ate and drank and ate and drank and after that they danced. They danced and sang into the night. At last they were tired. When the three soldiers asked, Is there not a loft where we could sleep? Let three such wise and splendid gentlemen sleep in a loft? Indeed, they must have the best beds in the village. So the first soldier slept in the priest's house. The second soldier slept in the baker's house, and the third soldier slept in the mayor's house. In the morning, the whole village gathered in the square to give them a send-off. Many thanks for what you've taught us, the peasant said to the soldiers. We shall never go hungry now that we know how to make stone soup. Oh, it's all in the knowing how, said the soldiers, and off they went down the road. Such men don't grow every day on a bush. Let's talk about it. You think it was the stones that made this soup so good? I don't think so either. I don't think stone soup needs stones at all. What happened was... Those people didn't want to share. They didn't want to share what they had. But when they began to share what they had with each other, they were able to make the best soup they'd ever tasted. And it was so good, and it felt so good to share what they had, that they had a party. So the lesson we can learn from this book is, when we don't want to share, or when we're not being kind, it doesn't only hurt that person, it hurts us too. Sharing makes all of us feel better. So that is what we're gonna think about for today. Now, this is what I want you to do. I'm gonna write a recipe for stone soup. I'm gonna make my own up. And I want you to make yours own up. You can draw pictures of what you would put in your soup, or you can write words of what you would put in your soup. And if you want to, have mom and dad take a picture and send me a recipe. 
I sure miss y'all. Till next time I see you.